Lisa Rubel of Quilty Zest and today I'm going to walk you through how to sew a pinwheel star block. So this block comes in a kit from Sit and Sew Fabrics and the kit includes the pattern right here as well as pre-cut pieces to make all of the blocks. So you'll get pre-cut triangles, rectangles, and squares in a variety of fabrics and then you'll match them together to make blocks. So in this block, I used pink for the background and then a teal for the, the star. And for the one I'm gonna demo for you today, I've got sort of a lime green and then a light pink. So let's take a look at the pieces we're going to need for one block. From color number one, we're going to need four rectangles, four squares, and four small triangles. And from color number two, we're going to need eight squares, four small triangles, and four large triangles. So for our first step, we're going to take a pink background triangle and two green squares. We're gonna start out by drawing a line on the wrong side of our two squares, uh, diagonally from corner to corner. Now I'm just using a pencil, you could also use a uh, water soluble marking pen or chalk, whatever your preferred method is. Then I'm going to take the first square and I'm going to lay it on my rectangle so the diagonal line runs from the lower corner to the upper point and I'm going to stitch on that line. Okay, now that I've stitched, I'm going to trim off uh, the excess seam allowance. So I'm going to line up the quarter inch line on my ruler on that stitch line and take off those two triangles. I'm gonna move those, get rid of them so they don't get mixed up with my other triangles. And then I'm going to press that triangle open. There's one. And I'm gonna take my second marked square, align it on the opposite end so that the line is going from the center down to the corner and stitch on that line. So, so with, with that, that second line stitched, stitched I'm, I'm gonna, gonna trim off the excess again quarter inch past that seam that I just stitched. And then I'm going to press that second corner open. And now I've got a flying geese unit. And I'm gonna make four all the same, just like this. With that, we're gonna start out with a small pink and a small green triangle. And now the orientation of these is very important. So you want to make sure that you have the same fabric on the left side of all of them. So I'm gonna set these all up at once. I'm gonna put the pink on the left side and the green on the right. You can see I've got short edges aligned. And, and then when I go to stitch, I'm gonna take my first green one, to fold it over the pink, and I'm gonna stitch down that line and I know that the pink will stay on the left-hand side. Okay, so you can see after stitching, the pink is on the left and I'm going to press this with the seams going to one side. There we go. And then my next step is to sew a large green triangle to the side of this so it will be a triangle that has two green and one pink. So I'm gonna align the long edges and then turn this one over and I'm gonna stitch down that long edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. So when I press this, I'm going to press away from my pieced triangle, so toward that larger triangle. And then I'm gonna take my little ruler and I'm gonna square this up to three and a half. And so when I do that, I'm going to align the diagonal line on my ruler with my diagonal seam and then trim off the corners and whatever else I need to. There we go. So I'm gonna make so when you trim these triangles, you may find that you have very little to trim, or maybe even it's a little less than the three and a half that it needs to be. And that's okay. Just trim off those uh, little dog ears. 
And if it is slightly less than three and a half, just keep that in mind and use a scant quarter inch seam in the next step. Our next step is to use these four triangle units to make our pin, the center pinwheel in the block. And the trick is to get them all going in the correct direction so they form a pinwheel. So let's give it a try. So we're gonna start with the upper right and then we're gonna go to the lower right. And the trick is, is that the, uh, the large triangle is going to be on the outside and that will ensure that your pinwheel blades in the center go in the correct direction. And so that's what it's going to look like. And what I'm going to do is take this unit on top of this one and stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance and do the same here. And then I'll join those two sets into uh, this block center. So I've got my two rows joined together. This is what it looks like. And I'll be honest with you, this is the trickiest part of this block is to sew that seam because you're trying to match a lot of fabric bulk in the middle to uh, make that pinwheel. So what I'm going to do is press this seam allowance open, which will help a bit with that bulk. And if you want, you can press all of these seam allowances open as you make these blocks and that will, uh, will minimize the bulk issues in general. So if we look, you can see my points come together pretty nicely there. So here's our block center. And then what we're going to do is set up the rest of the pieces. So I'm going to put a flying geese unit on the top and bottom, on the left and on the right. And then I'm going to add in these pink corner squares. And that is what my block will look like. So I'm going to start out by sewing the pieces into rows, just like this. And when I join these side flying geese to the center, I'm going to try to match up these points so that the point of my flying geese and the point of the pinwheel block come together. That also is a little tricky, but if you pin correctly, you should be able to do it. So let's get these stitched into rows. So I've got my pieces stitched into rows and I did the same thing where I alternated my seam allowances. So my seam allowances on the center section are pressed out, so then top and bottom are pressed in. So when I go to put this up here and attach it, I can nest the seams, which again just makes your block lay a little more flat and a little neater. I'm going to pin this one. Okay. And then I like to check in the center too. You can kind of see, do I have my points lined up? You can check that either visually